What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you comment anything down in the comment section. I enter your name into the $50 giveaway that I do every single week on this channel. It is the beginning of week seven. Hit up greenlightdfs.com before the showdown slate to get the entire weekend package um, in its entirety, as well as we are doing a giveaway this week to one of the people who sign up with the squad for week seven at greenlightdfs.com will get the NBA season for free. I will be choosing one of those people next week, the beginning of next week. All right. I'm not going to keep you too long. Let's go ahead and get straight into this. As you guys know, on my Thursday showdown slate videos, I talk about I, I, put, I talk about three guys that I really like and I want to get in the lineups, and then we'll talk about the other players as well. I'm not going to fill an entire lineup, but I'm going to talk about three guys that I really, really like, and then we'll kind of talk about value and ways you can go in the slate. All right, we have the Kansas City Chiefs traveling to Denver on this slate. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has been struggling a little bit to get like fantasy points wise. He's been struggling a little bit. Now that he's got Tyreek Hill back, he'll definitely do better. So I would expect some uh, big performances coming here soon, especially after the last three performances being 21, 21, and 20. I mean, that's not horrible, but it, we also are used to 30 pluses out of Patrick Mahomes. But um, in this matchup, I don't know exactly if Mahomes is going to have to do too much. Um, so let's just talk about real quick who I like at captains. Now, I do think Kansas City will win this game. And if they're clicking with Tyreek back, if that offense is able to run smoothly, I mean, last week they had Tyreek back, still, you know, struggled a little bit. Um, but Tyreek did get a lot of targets, so that's good news. But I do think Kansas City could get up here. They are favorites to win. I think that Flacco and company is going to have to throw to keep up with this game. So, one guy that I'm interested in that a lot of people might not, they might have lost faith in him, but at the captain spot, Emmanuel Sanders is interesting to me in GPPs especially because he's had a few really down games, okay? I mean, one target, four targets the last two games, four. When the first two games, he had seven targets and then a massive 13 targets week two, and then nine targets week four against Jacksonville. With only four targets the last two games, I would really expect Emmanuel to get fed here, especially in a matchup where they're going to be behind against KC most likely and be having to throw the ball. Now, obviously, Cortland Sutton's been uh, doing a great job. He's been getting solid, solid targets in this offense. But he's going against Bashad Breeland, who has been doing a decent job at limiting wide receiver twos. He's been doing a decent job. He hasn't allowed, he's allowed one game over 10 DraftKings points all year to Marvin Jones week four. Other than that, he's been limiting them pretty well. The guy who's been getting tore up is Char, uh, Char, Charvarius, sorry, Charvarius Ward. All right, Charvarius Ward gave up almost 24 to Kenny Galladay week four. He did limit Hopkins to 16, which I would have expected more out of Hopkins, but still, 16 is not that bad. He did give up over 15 to Tyrell Williams week two. So Emmanuel Sanders is an amazing spot here, and a guy who normally gets he really heavily targeted in this offense. I know he was dealing with a leg issue, um, but it looks like that's going to be good to go, and he's got that behind him now, and he's going to be able to come in and get his usual targets back up. I definitely think Emmanuel Sanders, this is the time to buy into him in a matchup against KC and their secondary that's not very good. Um, I know I talked about Bashad Breeland doing a very solid job versus wide receiver twos this year, which should open up a lot for Emmanuel Sanders in this. Um, it's, I'm not saying that Cortland Sutton is unplayable. What I'm saying is Emmanuel Sanders, for almost 2000 less, is a very good value, value in the same matchup if not slightly better against a worse cornerback in Ward. All right? So Emmanuel Sanders at captain. I'm expecting him to blow up and have a good game. I know the last few games have been down, but we know the target share this dude normally gets. I understand Cortland's blowing up a little bit. Lindsey's been getting involved in the past game. But I honestly see this as a Sanders breakout game right here, and I think he's going to come back to doing what we're used to seeing him do in an offense with limited targets. Um, like... So, I mean, you would think they're going to get Sanders fed here in this matchup. So, I love Emmanuel Sanders. All right. Now, at the flex, another guy I really like on this slate is Philip Lindsay at 8 8. Um, he's the guy that they go to in the pass game majority of the time. I mean, the dude gets about 15 targets on average, uh, carries on average, and then add on about four or five targets per game on average as well. 
he's been very efficient with his with his time on the field. And with this matchup against KC, I mean, they've been giving it up to running backs. Over 38 to Mark Ingram week three. Over 19 to Johnson week four. Over 20 to Marlon Mack week five. They've been giving it up to guys. And this is a perfect situation for Lindsey to get more involved in the pass game. And on DraftKings with it being full point PPR, that's always good. So Phillip Lindsey is the preferred running back in this game for me. I definitely, definitely like him. There is another running back that I have some interest in. Damian Williams is okay of an option. Um, LaShawn McCoy is okay, but both those guys GPP. Definitely lean Phillip Lindsay. I mean, the price on Damian Williams is ridiculous. 9-9 for Damian Williams. He really hasn't done anything other than his decent game um, in week one, where he got a touchdown, still only 13 carries. I mean, that backfield's a little muddled. Got LaShawn McCoy in there. So, yeah, I'm not trying to target those guys. But Phillip Lindsay at 8-8 is another guy I'm really interested that should get heavily involved in this Denver team when they fall behind. And even if they don't fall behind, regardless of game flow, Phillip Lindsay's going to get some good runs. So I definitely like him. On the KC side, I'm leaning Travis Kelsey in this one against Denver. I know Tyreek Hill just came back and dominated, had 10 targets in the past game, two touchdowns against Houston. Love seeing that. But here's the thing. Chris Harris is a very solid cornerback. Now, Tyreek Hill is a whole nother monster, though. The dude's super quick, and in no way am I saying Tyreek Hill can't beat him over the top multiple times. I think it could definitely happen. Here's the thing, though. We know what Travis Kelsey is capable of in this offense. We know Patrick Mahomes loves him. And we also know that Kelsey hasn't yet had that breakout game. He had a 26 at Oakland week two. But outside of that, I mean, he just hasn't really shined too bright. Last week, he only got six targets against Houston. I would expect that to change here in this matchup against Justin Simmons, who's going to be on him most most of the time. And, I mean, they haven't given up a ton to tight end this year, but they also really haven't faced anybody. All right, Swain, Kendricks, Delaney Walker, Trey Burton, who hasn't been good. Um, so Travis Kelsey's a whole new monster than they faced. I definitely see Kelsey having a great game here with Chris Harris trying to pay a lot of attention to Hill, probably some... Uh, they, I wouldn't be surprised to see him double team Tyreek Hill over the top, try to limit Tyreek Hill and make KC beat him another way. And I would expect Kelsey to really shine in this matchup if they do end up putting all their attention on Tyreek Hill and trying to limit that. Because like I said, against KC, you don't need the game plan against the running game. I mean, yes, they're going to have moments where they shine. LaShawn McCoy, Damian Williams, they'll have times where they'll do fine. But really what you want to focus on is limiting Tyreek Hill beating you on those huge plays. So if you can double, triple team the dude, tra- you know, that's what I would do. And then Travis Kelsey's going to run all over him. So at 9-8, giving us some value there at the flex position at a good price. I mean, he's 9-8 compared to Tyreek Hill at 11-2. So you're getting a savings on a guy who should get just as many targets probably in this past game. All right. Now, let's talk about other guys we're interested in. Patrick Mahomes at Denver, I already talked about. I don't know how much Mahomes is really going to have to do. Will he get another 20? Most likely. 20 to 25, most likely. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm just i on Joe Flacco at 8K. I know that might sound crazy, but for 3000 less, Joe Flacco is at home in Denver, most likely going to be down and have to throw a lot. Now, Flacco has had a... Not so good season, all right? He hasn't been too great. I mean, if you look at his game log so far this year, he's just kind of been, eh. He got a seven at Green Bay, which is understandable. Green Bay's secondary has been very solid this year. He got six against Tennessee. The 26 against Jacksonville was really, really good. I can see a 20-point performance here against a bad KC secondary with them trying to play catch up at home in Denver. All right. So I could definitely see a scenario where Joe Flacco does well, and I'm completely fine with pairing him up with Emmanuel Sanders and hoping Sanders has that breakout game and him and Flacco connect a lot. All right. Um, I talked about Cortland Sutton. I am okay with Cortland Sutton. Like I said, though, I do think it's going to be Emmanuel Sanders breakout game. I honestly do believe it. Um, Look, anything can happen. I'm pretty much predicting that because Emmanuel Sanders is normally the main guy on this offense, and he's only gotten a total of four targets over the last two games because of a lingering knee issue. Now that knee issue is behind him and he's feeling great, I would expect him to come in here and get heavily involved here in this one. You know he's probably behind the scenes complaining a little bit about those four targets in two weeks, so expect him to get targeted heavily. Sammy Watkins is going to miss this game once again, so obviously that bumps up. Travis Kelsey that bumps up Tyreek Hill and that also is going to give a little bit of a bump up to Byron Pringle he's only 2-8 okay 
He is only 2A, and he just seems like a solid value in this one. No Sammy Watkins. Most likely a lot of attention on Tyreek Hill, which should open up a lot for these secondary guys in this offense. All right, Byron Pringle had that breakout game with nine targets, six receptions week five, and then he came back down to reality with three targets, two receptions, 24 yards against Houston. Um, I'm not expecting him to go crazy, but can he hit value at 2A? Sure, definitely can. All right, Noah Fant. All right, I do like Noah here in this matchup as well. Um, going against KC, like I said, they're going to need everybody they can use on that Denver offense. They're going to have to throw to keep up in this game. Um, they are at home. I can see Noah getting in the end zone in this matchup. And at 3-4, he's a solid value as well. All right, let's talk about other guys. Obviously, always on showdowns, the kickers are in play. Okay, always. They are always in play. So let's go ahead and talk about them. Harrison Bucker and Brandon McManus. All right. I always lean to the home field kicker when it comes to kickers. And in this scenario, he happens to be 200 less. So I lean McManus slightly over Bucker, but both of these guys are in play. If you want to play both uh, both kickers and hope, it's just kind of a grinded out game. Casey's offense not really able to get in the end zone. Um, and Denver as well struggles in the red zone. If you want to predict that game flow, then yeah, go both kickers. If I had to choose one, I'd probably go McManus at home in Denver. Um, but both of them are okay. I'm not going to fault you for it either way. Um, anybody else that I want to talk about here? I talked about Joe Flacco, liking him and catch up. I just want to reiterate, I'm okay with Patrick Mahomes. If you have the money left over and you like the value that you see, then going Patrick Mahomes is at 12K. He's probably the safest bet on the slate in cash games. All right, he's probably the safest bet. You know what you're pretty much going to get from him. You're going to get 20 plus week in, week out. Okay, um, it's just in in full point PPR mode on DK. I do like putting a receiver that I'm expecting to break out at the captain mode and ex- and hope that he blows up at low ownership, seeing that he has a few duds the last two weeks, and that's Emmanuel Sanders. And then outside of that, I really don't want to spend 12K at my flex for Patrick Mahomes. I'd rather just save the 3K and go Joe Flacco, who I know is going to have to throw to keep up with this high powered KC offense with Tyreek Hill back. Um, but anyways. My final thoughts on this slate pretty much is Tyreek Hill can blow up at any moment. My thought process on this is Chris Harris and some help from the over the top secondary is going to try to limit Tyreek Hill as much as humanly possible, opening up Travis Kelsey to some and some little uh, plays to Byron Pringle as a cheap guy too, even Hardman. You can get these secondary KC guys that are cheaper. Um, to get some exposure to that that great offense and hope that that does come true and they're able to limit Hill in a way. Can they stop him entirely? Eh, no. Okay, he's going to do something. He's going to have some type of decent game, but is he going to have that huge blow up two touchdown game again? I don't know. Now with Chris Harris being a solid corner and most likely them zoning in on trying to stop that over the top big ass play, even if it's a little dump off, though, he can take it away. So, I look, I'm not going to try to s- s- sell you off of him or put you on him, whatever. I'm more on trying to save money and find those guys and balance it out, especially in GPP. I definitely want Emmanuel Sanders, Lindsey, and Travis Kelsey. Those are my three guys that I will want in my lineups. And Joe Flacco is also an amazing option as well to pair up with Sanders and Lindsey, knowing he's going to be behind having to throw to catch up to KC at home in Denver. You know this would be a big win for Denver taking out KC in this one. So excited for this Thursday slate, man. GreenlightDFS.com. Join the squad. Hopefully I was able to help everybody out, give you guys a good starting point on this slate. Let's go ahead and get this money.